This is Ilya Fischoff for Down to Earth. And I'm Serena McCormick. The shipwreck of the cruise vessel Costa Concordia lies in the Pelagio Sanctuary for Marine Mammals. Today we are talking to marine biologist Giuseppe Notar Bortolo di Ciara, who proposed the creation of the Pelagio Sanctuary. Thanks so much for joining us, Giuseppe. Very welcome. I'm pleased to be connected with you. What did you first think when you heard about the, the cruise ship capsizing? My, my first uh, thought, of course, uh, in addition to the fact that um, there were quite a few people dead in this accident, um, my first thought went to the, uh, to the fact that this is a highly valuable area from the uh, environmental point of view. The disaster has not happened yet because uh, all of the uh, fuel, at least most of it, uh, I understand, is still inside the tanks of the ship. But, of course, uh, the situation is very difficult. There has been salvaging uh, companies working at the wreck now for, uh, I think, a couple of weeks at least. Uh, I don't know if you know that um, there has been also a few sightings of uh, Mediterranean monk seals in that area. Uh, the monk seal, the Mediterranean monk seal, is one of the most endangered species of mammal in the world. And one or two or some of them uh, recently showed up uh, around the Giglio Island. Do you think that the government is, is doing a good job in responding to, to the shipwreck? For the time being, I think yes. Uh, cruise ships have been uh, uh, abusing uh, until now of uh, extreme freedom uh, because they say apparently um, you know the more we show our ships close up to people the more people will be enticed to come and, and you know and, and book a cruise on, on our ships and I, I think this is the same thing that uh, brings you know this big cruise ships into the lagoon of Venice you know, they say, I'm Venetian, by the way, so oh, I'm okay. sensitive to that. But why should you come with a, uh, something which is, resembles like a, a floating huge condo into uh, areas that are so beautiful that you visit because they are beautiful? Hmm. Do you think there, there will be less of that now that this, this accident has happened? Yes. Um, I, I understand that now the... Uh, the cruise ships, they are, they are working on uh, regulations <clears throat> so that the cruise ships will not be able to come inside the lagoon in Venice. They will, as you mentioned, the, uh, our environment minister is proposing, you know, much greater distances, minimum distances from the coast. So the, the shipwreck happened in the, in the Pelagos Marine Mammal Sanctuary. Why was the sanctuary created? Well, the sanctuary was created because in, uh, in the late 80s, when the idea surfaced, it was recently discovered that the area where the sanctuary is now uh, located uh, was very important for cetaceans, for whales and dolphins in the Mediterranean, because the, uh, the marine waters there, the, um, the pelagic waters are productive because of what the circulation, the general circulation of the Mediterranean. And, uh, and this uh, whales and dolphins were in danger mostly because they, there was a huge amount of um, uh, drift net fishing, mm. you know, the walls of death. And uh, we were really concerned and sad to see so many animals being killed every day. We would find them floating in the Ligurian mm -hmm. Sea. Can you just explain in a nutshell what a drift net is and why it's a problem? Uh, the drift net is uh, hanging from the surface, and it can be long as much as you want. It used to be there used to be drift nets uh, like 50 kilometers long. It's not set in a straight line. It's made, uh, uh, you know, in a zigzag, uh, so that it becomes like a maze uh, in which uh, you know the the uh, fish swim and they cannot get out of it anymore, and they they're bound to to get caught in it eventually. But that seems like the point. If you're fishing, don't you want the fish to get caught in the net? Right. But uh, the, the, another point is that it doesn't only take the fish that you're looking for. In this case, uh, swordfish. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it takes everything. Drift mm -hmm. nets have been capturing nuclear submarines. <laughs> um, really? Yeah. 
through. We catch a huge amount of dolphins, turtles, fish, uh, of uh, you know undersized fish, um, whales, uh, sperm whales have been uh, very badly uh, endangered by drift nets. There was a point in uh, history, like in the 80s and 90s, in which there were six to 700 boats in Italy alone that were using drift nets. So the, there, there has been a ban on the use of, of drift nets. Has it, have countries complied with it? Right now, uh, most of the uh, countries have, uh, in fact, uh, stopped fishing with drift nets, uh, but there are exceptions. In the southern part of Italy, there is uh, an important uh, portion of the fleet that is still fishing illegally. Did you have any, have you had any really surprising uh, observations of, of marine mammals? Once I was uh, swimming in a reef in Egypt, in the Red Sea, where uh, spinner dolphins go to rest during the day. And uh, one of them came very close to me, uh, carrying in, uh, on, on its fin, on its pectoral fin, flipper, a uh, little piece of plastic that was floating in the water. And uh, it dropped it in front of my nose. And it was like a, really like a dog uh, bringing a ball. And, uh, but this was not a dog. This was a wild mammal. And uh, so I was very surprised. I, I grabbed the plastic, uh, which in the end I actually took away from the sea and put it in the, in the trash. Uh, <laughs> I grabbed this uh, little piece of plastic and I threw it far, uh, like, you know, I would do with a ball with my dog. And, mm-hmm. uh, and, it, uh, and it happened. It happened. The dolphin went and picked up the plastic and brought it back in front of my nose again. That's, that was a really lovely story. I love that. Okay. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much for talking to us.